Another way the government might distort prices is by imposing taxes. And here we'll look at the case of per unit taxes. A per unit tax is simply a tax that gets levied on every unit of the good that's either consumed or produced. And the government might write the tax law in a way that envisions for consumers to pay Or it might write the law in a way that says that the firms are the ones who have to pay. So in the first case, the consumer would know that when she goes up to the cash register, she'll have to pay the price for the good plus the per unit tax. In the other case, the firm would know that when it produces a good, it will have to pay for the cost of the labor and the capital and so forth. And then in addition, pay that per unit tax for producing that good. Now that's called the statutory incidence of the tax. In other words, the incidence, who pays, that's envisioned by the statute that imposes the tax law. Now that turns out to be different from the economic incidence of the tax. The economic incidence of the tax is who actually pays for the tax, not who the law envisions as having to pay for the tax. So let's look at these two cases. Suppose the law says that consumers have to pay the tax. Then the people in our graph for care are the demanders, they are the consumers. They now know that they have to pay this tax on top of the price. So they're not going to be willing to pay as high a price because they know in addition they're going to have to pay this per unit tax. So that's going to shift down the demand curve. It's going to shift down the demand curve by exactly the per unit tax because the consumers know they're going to have to pay that on top of the price. So we'll see a downward shift in the demand curve by the per unit tax so that when the demand curve shifts it's going to cross So we'll see a decrease in the price and a decrease in the quantity. What about in this case? Well, in this case, it's the firms that care because they have to pay the tax. So when they pay the tax, they recognize that tax as an additional marginal cost. And we know the supply curve is made up of marginal cost curves, so that additional marginal cost just shifts the supply curve up by the amount of the per unit tax. So it's going to shift the supply curve up by the amount of the tax. So this is the amount of the per unit tax. And as that supply curve shifts, it will cross at a new equilibrium that's higher by the amount of the per unit tax. So we'll get an increase in the price and a reduction in quantity. Now we can look a little bit further at what's going on. This price, this new equilibrium price, is the price that the sellers, the firms, receive. But the consumers know they still have to pay the tax. So the consumers have to pay this tax. So the price they actually pay, once we include the tax, is up here. On this side here, this is the price that the consumers pay to the firms, but now the firms know they still have to pay this per unit tax, so that the price that firms actually get to keep is lower by the amount of the per unit tax. So the difference between these prices is the per unit tax in both cases. So now we could redraw these graphs without shifting curves and just show the final result. So in this case, we start with our supply and demand curves, and we see that we started this equilibrium, but then we introduce a difference between consumer and producer prices that's equal to the size of the per unit tax. We introduce what's called a tax wedge on the left side of the equilibrium, with the higher part that's right off the demand curve being the price that consumers pay and the lower 
price being the price that sellers receive and the difference being that per unit tax. In this case over here, start again with the supply curve and our initial equilibrium. We introduce another tax wedge, an amount that's equal to the per unit tax to the left of the equilibrium with the higher price being equal to the price that consumers pay and the lower price being the price that sellers receive. Once we know that that's the outcome of a tax, we don't have to shift the curves around. We can just put the tax wedge into the picture and know that the higher price is the price consumers pay and the lower price is the price that firms receive. But what we see is that the picture looks exactly identical in both cases. The economic incidence who pays for the tax is exactly the same in both cases. Consumers pay for a portion of the tax, firms pay for a portion of the tax. And who pays which portion, how big the relative portions are, is going to depend on the relative elasticities of demand and supply. It's not going to depend on how the law is written.